This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian will be up at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria in Cary, Ohio for some barbecue and bingo this Thursday only from 4 to 7 p.m. So be sure to throw out your dinner plans this Thursday to get some of that sweet, sweet, good old barbecue from the Mad Canadian himself. And be sure to check out his social media for more information about him and his food truck and where he'll be heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who? The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based, more specifically Toledo, more specifically than that Perrysburg, Fresh roasted, roast to order, veteran owned, marine owned, all beans fair trade certified and USDA certified organic. Uh, all of their coffees, all of their coffees are all of those things. Fresh roast to order, uh, fair trade, organic, all of that. Um, it's all roasted by hand. Uh, integrity is at the core of what they do, which serves both the farmers supplying those beans, making sure they are treated eth ethically, but also making sure that you, the consumer, are getting the best possible product, the freshest possible, fro po best and freshest possible product. Cal, this can be one of those episodes. I, I can already feel it. Uh, so you can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How's it going, everybody? Ready for, ready for some Know Your Enemy today? That's right. We got them corn huskers. We got the huskers of corn. Like the corn huskers. All right, Jared, we got a lot to talk about, so let's let's go right into it. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired, Jared. <laughs> traveling, traveling for work and got back and we're doing a late recording today. But other than that, I'm good. How are you, Jared? Well, I was doing okay. Um, I was doing okay. But then Buckeye Esquire in the chat just asked the question, is husking the same as shucking uh, in, in regards to corn? And now that's all I can think about. I think we have to cancel the episode. I, I don't know how I'm supposed to focus on anything other than that. Because I don't know the answer. Well, let me, let me, let me take it from here, Jared. As we get to know your enemy, the Nebraska corn huskers, the huskers of corn. Or the shuckers. Or Who's the shuckers. to say? Who's to say? Maybe they're the corn shuckers. So Nebraska three and six this season, one in five of the Big Ten, but we've mentioned it a number of times in the, in this um in a number of episodes in the past. Every game that that um, Nebraska has lost has been a one-score game. So this could easily have been a, what, like an 8-1, and 7-3, 6-4 and four type, of, or whatever, 6-3 and three type of um, team here. Yeah, uh, they, I they, mean... They, they, had, they had close losses to Illinois, Oklahoma... Michigan State, Michigan, Nebraska, and Purdue. It's it's just a weird team, and it. I feel like that we talked about Nebraska like this. Was it last Did you year? Say, maybe it was, or maybe it was two years ago. By the, by the way, I think you just I think you just said that Nebraska lost to Nebraska when you meant to say lost to Minnesota. Mi Minnesota, yes. Yeah. My bad. Um, no, that's um, cool. Um, but in by the way, it's worth noting here that Oklahoma. Top 10 team, Michigan State, top 10 team, Michigan, top 10 team, Minnesota, um, what 
what is Min- uh they, they're in the top 20 where where did they come in anyone help me out here where did they come in on the yeah, they're like 21st somewhere around there <clears throat> somewhere in that area um somewhere either in the late teens or the early 20s uh, minnesota checks in these haven't been bad teams that they've is it higher than that 19 20th 20 they are 20 by the way i i, I reach out to my lawyer and my lawyer has informed me that husking and shucking seem to be the same thing. Good, good, good to to get that all solved, Jared. Yeah. So Nebraska here, and when I, when I was writing the notes up here, Jared, very surprised to see how how much yardage they've really put up so far this year. They're they're putting up four hundred and seventy yards per game. Yeah. But yet they're a three and six team here and they're letting up, they're letting up so much less yards. They're letting up under 350 yards and you look at them like, Oh, they, they won a lot of games. They didn't lose that many. <laughs> it, it's just so weird looking at the stats here and seeing a below 500 team with these kind of stats. Nebraska's able to do stuff on offense or, not letting up too much on defense too, but what do you make of this Nebraska team? I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm still stuck on the shuckers. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay. I'm kidding. Um, they're completely dependent upon Martinez that, that I think that goes without saying both the leading passer and the leading rusher on the team. They, you know, leading receiver. You, they, they both live and die by Adrian Martinez. That's, leading that's receiver what it as is. well. Leading receiver as well, Jared. Uh, you know, I, if only there was a way, <laughs> if only there's a way. Um, so, I mean, you look at these yards, 2,200 yards through the air, uh, 450 ish yards on the ground. Uh, and that, and that's 450 yards with 125 being subtracted by sack yardage. So if we're talking about him actually like in a running capacity, it's actually like 575. Now that being said, he's also taken 22 sacks on the year, which both is and isn't a, both is and isn't his fault. You know what I mean? Like sometimes these guys need to, sometimes these scrambling running backs don't give, give up soon enough on a play when they should get rid of it. So part offensive line, part him. Um, But here, here's what's, here's what's killer. You see all of these stats, you see all these yards. He's only thrown 12 touchdowns and that's compared to seven interceptions. There's a lot of good. Now it should be noted. He has 11 rushing touchdowns on top of that, but I was just talking passing touchdowns to, to interceptions as a comparison. I don't think you want your quarterback running for nearly as many touchdowns as he's thrown for. I don't think that's how you have success in 2021 college football. I'm just doing some math real quick here, Jared. In the in the month of um October here. He's yeah. only he's only rushed for 89 yards. Total. Okay. Not not one game total. 50 against Northwestern, which he didn't really have to run because they were up so so big there. They ended up winning 56 to 7. 38 yards against Michigan, negative 17 against Minnesota, and then 18 yards on 10 attempts against Purdue just last week. Yeah. Um now it should be no- noted that while Martinez is the leading rusher on the team, uh, uh, Johnson's right behind him. So it's, it's, it's almost a tie. They're both rushing for four and a half ish, a carry. But again, you have, you have to note that Martinez's rushing stats are also affected by sex. So that has yeah. to be, that has to be noted. Um, by the way, getting a lot of questions, uh, a lot of activity over here in the chat about uh, how, what, what are the linebackers going to do? Are the linebackers struggling? Are you going to put one of the linebackers as a spy on him? 
who would be that spy. Um, guys, you're way ahead of me. Okay, I guess we're now we're putting Cage at spy. I, I <laughs> I'd like to see it. I think it'd be fun. And not I wouldn't like to see it from a Buckeye fan perspective, but just as more more of a fan of chaos perspective, would I just like to see mm-hmm. how that might turn out? Yeah. I mean, I, I, Martinez can make a lot of guys miss. He, he he's definitely a, a threat on it on his um, with his legs. You, you gotta have you gotta have a spy on him because I I still don't trust trust Martinez throwing the ball. <laughs> As you see, and like if you look at some of these games here, Jared, he's had three games this season throwing under 55% yeah. completion. And he's only had one game over 75%, which I think that's probably about the realm of where Who uh, is that Stroud against? Is. Uh, that was against Oklahoma, actually. No, oh, okay. Well, that's what happens when you play a big 12 passing defense. I, I, was, <laughs> I was fully expecting you to say Fordham. To, to be fair, I asked you that, and then I was just going to go, yeah, an FCS team. Oops. <laughs> well, he, it was, he did throw 73% against, against them. So close. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. So other, other players to keep an eye out. Uh, they got a pair of wide receivers. It's his main um, target. Uh, Samori and Omar, each of them having a total of five touchdowns between the two of them. And, what is that? Six over six hundred and sixty yards, or excuse me, eight hundred and sixty yards uh, combined there. But I do note, Jared, as much as we love, especially in the chat or our Discord here, love talking about the year of the tight end. Martinez loves throwing it, throwing it to his tight end too, uh, Austin Allen, who ha- who's leading or is second in receptions and yardage and tied for touchdowns for the, um, for the receiving group there. So he loves throwing it to his tight end there. So he has one you less gotta, than de- got to definitely, definitely. Yes. <laughs> definitely keep an eye out for the tight end. Yeah. And, and, you know, not, not to give all of the love, not to give all of the love to the offensive side of the ball. There are some players on the defensive side of the ball to watch out for as well. Um, Guys, dare I say it, Nebraska has a better linebacking core than Ohio State. And a lot of these guys are are young. Um, You have Henrich, who I, Kyle, Henrich is a true freshman. Is that correct? True freshman? No, he's a redshirt. Nope, he's a redshirt. Redshirt freshman. Okay. I knew he was a freshman. Um, Yeah, you got... uh, Reamer, you got Nelson. They they have a really great core of linebackers. Um, so that that has to be noted, um, especially, you know, you had Ohio State sort of struggling in in the red zone. So now what what we're now watching the offense, maybe with a little more caution, a little bit more concern than than we were before the Penn State game. Uh, that being said, I, with all due respect to Nebraska, our brethrens in the war against Kevin Warren, um, their defensive line isn't nearly, yes, thank you, Kyle. Uh, their defensive line isn't nearly as good as Penn State's and their, def- and their, <laughs> don't, don't, don't mess with me like that, Nomad. Uh, and their secondary sure as hell isn't nearly as good as Penn State's. Um, so it's, we're, we're going to watch this game maybe with a little bit more caution because we saw the offense not be perfect last week against Penn state. Uh, mm-hmm. but they, they aren't going to bring the same challenges that Penn state brought by, by any means. Uh, Martinez is not Clifford. And this defense, especially in the front four and the back four, uh, aren't aren't Penn State either. So with all due respect to to the the fellas out in Nebraska, it's it's not it's not gonna be Ohio State is as good as they are advertised. It's just 
in my opinion, that Penn State was probably a little bit better than advertised, uh, mm -hmm. especially with a healthy or mostly healthy Clifford compared to what Illinois got, which yeah. was a broken it, Clifford. And I'm going to give a lot of credit to Nebraska's defense. Like they've they've done a pretty good job. Yes, they're three and six, but I think there's a lot more in inside the game that happens where Nebraska just has a hard time finishing the games to to pull up the victory. But you look you look here, like their rushing defense is pretty good against Sparty, which Sparty just runs the ball so much. They held Sparty to 2.4 yards per carry. Against Michigan, um a little bit more, 4.9 yards. And then and then in Oklahoma about five yards too. And their passing defense too, only letting up the most, I think, all season is like 250 yards. If I'm looking at their big games here, Sparty, Michigan, and, and Oklahoma, 214, 255, and 183 to Michigan State. This is a good this is a good no, defense. Esquire. Not the not not as good as Penn State's defense, but this is still a good defense that Ohio State has to go up against. So we're really curious to see how our offensive line is going to adjust, uh, if if we're going to be able to run the ball a little bit more effectively. That way we can um, do better in the passing game, get get some get our wide receivers open more. But yeah, I, I really think I'm really curious to see how our offensive line adjusts from what we saw against Penn State. Well, the biggest adjustment is just that they aren't playing Penn State this week. And all, all due respect to Nebraska's linebackers, who I think are very, very good. Um, their defensive line does not does not scare me um, mm. for, for what it's worth. Well, I mean, they, they got a they got a senior um, DT, uh, Ben uh, Still. Really good uh, defensive tackle. They they play a three four defense, so yep. you're not going to see a lot of stats from from this defensive line. But their their senior um, defensive tackle very good. So keep an eye out for number ninety five when he's out on the field. Uh, Hi, Jared. there. Of uh, what? What were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to I was going to say if we wanted to um get right into our um ad break our our picks here. Yeah. Oh, we can do an ad break real quick, Jared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh let's let's do an ad break. We the uh, our episodes have been inflating and getting near an hour again lately. Uh between the guest host and then you uh missing a couple episodes and then coming back and having a lot to say cuz you hadn't been on the mic in a little bit. Uh, we had like three episodes where we were doing, <laughs> uh, th uh, this is just the Ohio state episode gangland. We're doing national tomorrow because Kyle just flew in and boy, are his arms tired? I... Why, why just, did I do that? Just, why just, did I just, do that? Just back up, just back up here, Jared. I'll, 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 I'll talk about the mad Canadian barbecue company here. Please do. As I mentioned the top of the, uh, as I mentioned the top of the show, mad Canadian We'll be in Cary for some um, barbecue and bingo at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday from 4 to 7. Be sure to check his um, social medias for more information. Uh, some some reviews here, because I, I like reading some of these reviews. It tells a lot about, about the Mad Canadian here. Here's somebody saying that um, the Mad Canadian catered her daughter's uh, graduation party. Not only was the service excellent, Food was amazing. Everyone was asking who made that food because it was so good. Well, it was the Mad Canadian. <laughs> the Mad Canadian. Um, here's another one saying had some pulled pork, coleslaw, and corn. He he does he does make corn too. Uh, for the family and holy crap, was it awesome? Much much more uh, re great reviews over at the Mad Canadian social medias. Check them out. Great guy. Great food. You won't be disappointed. Great beard. Uh, Mad Canadian Bar yeah. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who? The Iron Bean Coffee Company. I already did that. I already did that. Let, let's talk about some of the specific coffees. I jump on the website here, and Kyle, I think he's having a bit of a sale. He might be having a bit of a sale here. I see a bunch of coffees, oh $2 off. 
Um, you might want to jump over there and see what you can get. Um, the Bananas Foster is back and better than ever, or probably probably mostly the same because it was already pretty damn good to begin with. So it's 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 back and it's it's still damn good. Is probably the better way of saying that. Uh, cinnamon roll still sold out. Uh, but let's take a look at some of our coffees that are on sale right now. Mom's Carrot Cake also sold out, by the way. On sale are all the K-Cups. You can get a Fierce in a K-Cup. You can get the Ride or Die. Or you can get the Rage Against the Dying of the Light. Those are all $2 off per order. Um, and let's see what else is on sale. It looks like our, our Nordic Trio are on sale at the moment. Your Loki, your Odin, and your Thor uh, as is the fear no evil, which is a black roast. It's it's dark beyond dark. It's if you like a dark roast, this is this is the next level of that. Uh, also, currently on sale is the Integrity, which is their flagship coffee. That's their core coffee uh, that makes a great espresso. Espresso that one's on sale. Uh, the cast iron gets its name because it was originally roasted in a cast iron pan. Uh, then the drink from the skull of your enemy. Uh, is another dark roast coffee uh, of uh, also on sale for two dollars. The cast iron's a medium roast, and Kyle, that that's your sale lineup. That's what they currently have sale on sale over at IronBeanCoffee.com. So if you're looking for a deal, uh, there you go. Go go check out one of those. You never know; it might be your new favorite coffee. The Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Jared, let's get into some of our picks here for, for the Ohio State-Nebraska game. Uh, who do we have as our guest speaker, or our guest picker, I should say? Um, Nomad got a little excited when I said speaker there. Uh, <laughs> our guest, our guest peaker, picker, who do we have this week? Gangland! Hello, Gangland! He's <laughs> yes, in the I chat. Everyone, er, he said me. Every, everyone say hi to Gangland. <laughs> All right, Gangland, uh, guest picker here. So our first one here, Jared, Ohio State player to watch. Who do you, who do you have <laughs> Who do you have as um, Ohio State's player to watch for this game? I'm going Cody Simon, um, but I, I'll be honest with you, I could have picked really any of the linebackers here. I actually really wanted to go steal Chambers, but uh, not going to be available for the first half of this game due to a targeting penalty mm -hmm. in the second half of last week's game. Uh, yep. but as a lot of the guys were alluding to down in the chat, when we are talking about Martinez, this will be a game in which you might have to deploy a bit of a spy at times where the linebacker is going to play a key role in an offense where you have the quarterback who is both the leading passer and the Peter, uh, man, I can't talk today guys and the leading rusher on the team. So it's going to be a group effort by the linebackers, but I'm picking out Cody Simon uh, for my Ohio State player to watch. I just changed mine, Jared. I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Luke Whipler. That's a good he had, answer. He had a, he had a, he had a, he That's had a, a very good answer. Bad, he had a pretty bad game against Penn State. It's really going to come down to him being able to just not focus on what he did against Penn State and just focus what's ahead of him. I, I really like what, um, uh, what CJ Stroud said in, I think it was after the game, somebody asked, asked him about, Hey, when he threw, when he threw that to, uh, through that pass and it went over uh CO 2s head there, like what, what were you thinking there? And, and Stroud's answer was, I, I didn't, I didn't think of it. I just was, too focused on the next play. And I think that's what Whipler needs to do here. Just, yeah. It's, it all comes down from the center here to get the snaps off correctly here and going to have his hands full. It's a three, four defense. It's a different type of look. So I'll, I'll go with Whipler. Uh, Gangland, since he's in our live chat, wants us to know that he's picking Cam Martinez. All right. Enemy player to watch. Kyle, um, I'm going to let you go first. Um, I'm also going to go with Martinez, but <laughs> I'm going to go with Martinez as um, the Adrian. Nebraska player to watch. 
Yes. Uh, just, for just obvious, for the for obvious reasons. For obvious, for <laughs> yeah, okay. obvious reasons. It, That's it, fair. It, it starts and ends with Martinez on how of how Nebraska is going to do here. They got they got to score points, and yeah, they got to score points in it. Martinez. I don't need to say anything else. Who do you got, Jared? Uh, I am first off. Uh, Gangland says he agrees. So he's also taking Martinez. And by the way, everybody, that's the correct answer. But since we're playing podcast here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick someone else. Uh, I'm going with Garrett Nelson. He is one of the linebackers I was speaking of earlier. Uh, you know, Ohio State needs to improve, needs to get, needs to sort of get past their red zone issues from last week. And Again, kind of like with Cody Simon, I'm I'm picking Garrett Nelson here, but I, I really could have picked uh, Henrich or or Reamer. I, I could have, you know, I I probably could have picked any of the linebackers, um, but yeah, I Garrett. I picked Garrett Nelson for for a few reasons. I think mostly because I think I believe he's leading the team in tackles for loss. I believe is the deciding mm-hmm. factor I went with there. Um, so that's that's why I, I went with Garrett Nelson. Yeah, I believe he might be also leading the team in sacks as well, too. He he's a guy he's the kind of linebacker that really gets there in the bat in the backfield and really interrupts uh, the plays. So yeah, that's that's a good pick if you had to choose someone other than Martinez. <laughs> um key matchup here, Jared. Who do you have as for the key matchup in this game? Uh the linebackers versus the quarterbacks. And I'm I'm including both. I'm include that's that's actually it's actually four, because when I say the linebackers versus the quarterbacks, I'm saying both teams linebackers versus both teams quarterbacks. So uh, that that to me is it, no Matt, It's too easy to say offensive line versus defensive line because that's literally always true. <laughs> Gangland Gangland chooses chooses Craig Young versus Martinez. All right, so we kind of so we kind of agree, um, sort of, kind of, <laughs> sort court, sort sort of kind of agree. Um, yeah, yeah. Kyle, who do you have? I have the Ohio State offensive line versus themselves. Yeah, I can see that. Just put it putting that pat like I just said about Whipler. Yeah, putting whatever whatever they did in Penn State behind them in the review mirror. Focus on here cleaning up those middle mistakes because you, you can't cut, you can't have those kind of mistakes against uh, Nebraska. You're going to Nebraska. You, yeah. Offensive line versus um, their mental mistakes. That that's uh that's a good call. Uh, all right, Kyle, next up, we have our three final predictions that are all actually the same prediction. Um, we have the spread. Ohio State's favored by 15 and a half. Without giving too much away, Kyle, who do you have with Ohio State minus 15 and a half? Ohio State 15 and a half. It's, it's a lot of points here, especially with each of Nebraska's loss. Yeah. Has been a one score game. I hear that. I hear that. Um, Nebraska's I, I got, yet to got, lose by 15 and a half. Mm-hmm. I, I got Nebraska to cover here. Not by much, but I got, I got Nebraska to barely cover. All right. Uh, Gangland and I are not treasonous assholes. So um, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Uh, we're both going Ohio state. So that being said, Kyle, you are in fact picking Ohio state to win the game. Mm-hmm. Okay. You redeemed yourself. So what is that right. final score then? Um, let's see here. I have Ohio State 38, Nebraska 24. All right. Uh, Gangland has picked a final score of 59 to 3. It's big. Uh, if they can keep Nebraska out of the end zone, that would be huge. Um, he says he's the taking Ohio plan. State big. Uh, Nebraska won't be able to get their Penix up after the letdown with that blonde chick from Ann Arbor. I don't know what any of that meant, but 
Uh, my final score prediction is 49 to 20. Nice. Shh. Don't, don't, don't say the quiet part loud, Kyle. <laughs> uh, so I don't, Kyle, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Did you have a chance to listen to last week's Know Your Enemy with Mark Givler? I did, yes. So I made the game prediction of, of, of 59 to 10. And, and like, a, especially with hindsight, a ridiculous score, right? A ridiculous guess. I, I, because Mark Givler is Mark Givler and I respect him so much. And I, I didn't have the nerve to tell him, uh, well, I had to pick something like that because we have a meme where my score is always equal 69, but I, I couldn't bring myself to say it to his face. So I just had to, <laughs> so I just had to let it, just had to let it ride and, and, and just like, yeah, no, 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 seriously though, 59 to 10. <laughs> All right, Gangland, what do you have your score to be? Oh, yeah, never mind. He said 53. I already said it. Okay. I already never said mind. It. Never mind. All right, Jared, Um, any last thoughts? Any Anything else? Let's get the Austin's over-unders and the rest. Now let's get the Austin's over-unders and the rest of the Ask Loopcast questions. All right. Austin's over and unders. Martinez rushing attempts at 11 and a half. Over. I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over. I mean, it's, it's better. We're... The recent, yeah. the recent games, the recent games hasn't really shown that he's averaging pretty much eight yard or eight carries a game. But I'll, I'll go with over in this one. If if Nebraska wants to get in here, ne Martinez needs to be able to run. Uh, yeah. Let's see. CJ Stra Stroud. Whoa, whoa, Stroud. I, I didn't answer. You said yes. But I didn't say why. <laughs> I expect right, because we have. By college rules, we also have to uh, count sacks as rushing attempts, which I think might be the difference. All right. Good point. CJ Stroud completion at 64 and a half percent. I'll go over. He's, over. he's throwing the ball. He's throwing the ball very well. Over, over, over. Uh, Ronnie Hickman tackles at eight and a half. That feels real low to me. It does. Um, how many, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find this quickly or not. Uh, let me, let me see how quickly I can do this. Stats, stats, and stats. I'm just doing the last three games. Um, this, this is going to take too long. Well, I'm abandoning this. Um, but so I, the I, last, I don't. The last, the last few games here, Jared. Okay, Kyle's got four, it. 14. Two, six, eleven. Two. Wild. That was against okay. Indiana. Wild. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm still I'm still gonna that. go. I'm still gonna go over. All right. Uh, I'll go. I'll go over as well. Nebraska total yards at three hundred eighty-three and a half. I'm gonna go over with that one. Uh, I'm sorry. Could you say that again? I don't have the show notes up. Nebraska total yards at 383 and a half yards. You said over? Mm-hmm. I said over. Yeah, I feel like it's probably going to be over, um, but that doesn't worry or concern me because I feel like Ohio State's, I think, going to score a lot of points, which means Nebraska's going to have to go pass heavy. Um so I, I think Nebraska's end up getting a lot of yards this game, especially in the second half when the yards are kind of junky. Um, so I think it's going to end up going over. Yep. Total, total Hoosier, total. Ohio State catches by wide receivers. So not tight ends, running backs, or fullbacks. Just wide receivers. Over under 19 and a half catches by the wide receiver crew. I'm going to go under with that one. That feels high. That feels high. I'm going to go under as well. Yep. Trey Hendo yards per attempt at 7.4. Over. I'm going to go over. I think, I think he's going to have, I think the offensive line is going to, it's going to pave highways for him. And he's, he's going to be over in that one. Oh, he's been over that number every game, except the last game, right? He yep. was averaging. I think nine or almost nine per carry before the Penn state game. 
And then I, and then he had a measly six and a half or whatever it was against Penn State that was so terrible. Measly. He had 5.4, so 5.49, 6.4, 8.9, 11.6, 11.5. Yeah. Over. I'll go, I'll go over. I'll go over. Uh, Ohio State punt return touchdowns over under at 0.69. Nice. Uh, under, I'm sorry, Kyle, yeah. and I'm sorry, Austin. I know oh. you guys both desperately want want that punt return touchdown, but I'm. I know you're not going to win any money betting that it's going to happen in any one given game. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Some more questions here, Jerry. Did you answer? Uh, what? Yeah, I said, I said, I said under. Oh, okay. I think you just said it real quiet because it made you sad. Yeah, sad. Um, <laughs> Austin has a question here for us. What is the lowest amount of points Ohio State could score and the highest amount Nebraska could score? I think, I think the lowest Kyle's I think the lo- score prediction I think kind of nailed that. Yeah, I yeah, I think the lowest is I think Ohio State scoring probably about against this Nebraska team, I'll, I'll say about like 31 points is the lowest and the highest that Nebraska would score against Ohio state. I would say probably about that score too, probably about 31, 35 points max. Yeah. uh, I think that's probably, I think that's about fair. Uh, I think the only way they're scoring 35 though is under some stupid circumstances. Um, Defensive touchdowns, lots of turnovers, but yeah, it's still possible, but, um, it would take it would take a uh, a collapse on Ohio mm-hmm. State side to have that happen. Yep. Who's your Buckeye Zach, who's in in our chat as well? Uh, Vegas obviously knows their stuff. Does Ohio State cover this week? Answer that already. What do you think? D- does Ohio State cover Zach? Yeah. Let's let's get Zach's answer on that one. Go ahead and ask the next question while we wait. Okay. Uh, let's see. He also, he says, he yes, says yes. Um, it's 2024 going to explode into a fantastic class. Too early to tell <laughs> too early. 2024. To they don't have any commits yet. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? 2024. I, uh, I, are, 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 hold on. I can name like, I can name like, all 2023 he's correcting himself uh Uh, yeah i think i think they're in great position on some great players in 2023 yeah 2024 is yeah a bit of a reach to try to get more i handle on that 2024 kyle in 2024 i can only people i can name in that class is a bunch of quarterbacks and a guy named cash cleveland and that's because his name is cash cleveland Mm-hmm. <laughs> How do you forget a name like Cash Cleveland? Yeah. All right. Um, also, last question for me from Buckeye Zach here. <laughs> Who's your Buckeye Zach? Are we as the Buckeye Empire spoiled as a fan base? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, yes, but also no. Yes, because we get mad when we beat Penn State and we don't beat Penn state who is a very good football team decisively enough. And, but at the same time, if we're comparing ourselves to Bama and if Bama's the goal, we're not meeting that goal. So I don't know what, what side of the argument do you want me to take here? Cause I can take both of them. Uh, only Saban is Saban and he'll yep. retire soon and <laughs> they won't. So there's a win for you. All right. Nomad here has a, has a few questions for us, Jared. How many up and backs did Whipler run after the, not our rival game? I don't know, man. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's how day runs things. Honestly, no, I don't think so. I don't think so either, but if he did, I would say one for every penalty that he had. 
Yeah. What do you have, like three or four? Yeah, I think like three. All right. Um, what do the Buckeyes need to do to s- stop senseless penalties? Uh, you're, I, you just have to keep playing games. Honestly, the fact that Ohio State has gone this long, I consider how many freshmen and redshirt freshmen are on the field right now. The fact mm-hmm. that penalties haven't been an issue all year is a huge credit to Ryan Day and everybody. That's and, and honestly, to go along with what Jared said, very a lot of freshmen's playing here, and it's just more time, more playing time. So uh, watching people, uh, Dinger, uh, Hoosier, a couple other people talking about if Saban's Saban's not coming to Columbus. I'm just letting you I'm letting you know that right now. Alabama has started scheduling home and homes, which they've never done under Bama. Um, They've started or excuse me, they've never done under Saban. They he didn't go to Kent State. No, he did not. Um, or what, what do you mean by that? Anyway, you know, he did Alabama did not play a game at, at Kent. I promise you that they did not play a game in Akron. Um, yep. he's played now. I'm not saying that Saban's never played anyone good at a conference because he absolutely has. It's yes. They did play at Penn state in 2011, but that game was scheduled before Saban took over Alabama. Uh, so that kind of doesn't count. Um, Saban, Saban has never done a home and home at Alabama with a prominent team. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just never done it. And all of a sudden, Alabama starts scheduling these prominent home and homes. Do you think he's going to on the road to any of those stadiums? Because he's not. Nope. Uh, let's see here. Has the pendulum swung too far with the defense? Our, our resident running, Kool-Aid drinker, running our resident zone. SEC Kool-Aid drinker thinks that we're crazy for thinking Saban retires before 2028. I, You realize he's 70, yes? He is 70 years old. He will not let himself fall into mediocrity. Mediocre. I can't speak, everybody. No, he won't coach until he's 80 because he won't accept himself at a, in a deteriorated deteriorated state. He won't do it. He Joe Paterno was okay with being irrelevant for 10 or more years. He was okay with it because being the coach at Penn State was more important to him than Penn State being successful. Saban will not do that. Saban will not coast for 10 years being a subpar football team. He won't do it. He has more respect for himself than that. He's more competitive than that. He will retire before he gets bad, which is not something that Bowden or Paterno did, but Saban will do it. Saban won't be mediocre. He will not, he will not let himself be mediocre. Sorry, Kyle. Next question. Has the pendulum swung too far with the defense running zone? Um, no matter. I I if, I don't know. It feels like no matter what the defense does, someone will be upset about it. If they're running too now, they're running too much. There, that's all I saw. Yet or uh, against Penn State. Oh, they keep the zone keeps getting eaten up. What they need to play more man. They need to play more man. Where where are we all watching the Oregon game? Because I remember everyone screaming, why do they always play man? Why don't they play more zone? The defense you want is the defense in which you're mixing it up. Yeah. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. You're going you're gonna to get people complaining. You don't need to not run a zone or not run a man. You need linebackers who can actually cover people in the field. There, mm-hmm. I said it. Will Stroud ever keep an actual option play? Doesn't he's appear done that way. He's done it this year. He's just, it's just very rare. Very he, rare. Very, yes. very rare. And he'll, he'll do it again, but not very often. Mm-hmm. Well, here's a good one. Will Martinez expose our linebackers on the run 
or on the pass? I think we've already gone over that in great detail. Or uh, mm-hmm. is is he as is he asking on the run or the pass, or is he just saying one or the like? Does he want us one? to? Do you want us to pick one or the other? Yep. Nomad. Yes. That's how I took oh. that. Oh, uh, uh, on the run because Martinez is a better runner than he is a thrower. Mm-hmm. And quite frankly, the line, the line, you can't expose the linebackers in pass defense because Oregon and Penn State have already done that. Yeah. That's already been exposed. Is is CO2's draft stock falling with JSN's better playing? Not that JSN's playing better. It's just that he's getting better stats. NFL scouts don't give two shits about stats. They they watch the footage, guys. So they don't the scouts they they care about they, they care about your measurables, they care about your skills, they care about your game tape. They don't look to see how many receptions or how many mm-hmm. it, it's it, I'm not worried about it. I mean Olave has nine touchdowns for the year. JSN has three. They they both have the same amount of receptions right now. Yeah. And would you believe me if I told you, Jared, that JSN has a better average per reception than Olave? That does surprise me. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. That is all the questions we have, Jared. All right. Uh, that's it. That's the end of the episode. Um, everyone. Um, uh, that's a good point. Nomad. Olave does do a lot of screens that, that hurts the average. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The I, I want if everyone can, it's a 10 questions. It's 10 questions. It'll take you five minutes. Uh, I created a survey so we can learn more about the people listening to the show. It's simply survey.thesloopcast.com. It's just a it's just a survey monkey survey. Um well come back tomorrow, Dinger. <laughs> we'll do we're doing another episode tomorrow. It'll be fun survey.thesloopcast.com again it's 10 questions it'll take you five minutes maybe slightly more um and it would it would be huge for us just to know who's listening to the show it's anonymous um no you don't need to sign in to anything you don't need to give us your name or your email address or anything like that uh, I, good idea, gangland. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Um, if you could, please, once again, it'll take you like five minutes. It's 10 questions. I think all but one of the questions or maybe no, it's like all but like two or three of the questions are, are either like checking boxes or radials. Um, there's very few like open text boxes where you'd need to write much. Uh, and if you if you come across a question you don't want to answer, don't. They're all skippable. You can go in there and and, and not. <laughs> so uh, once again, I'll put the link in the show notes, but it is survey.thesloopcast.com. Uh, outside of that, check out our merch stores. Kyle is wearing our Know Your Enemy shirt, which is our best-selling shirt. That is Know Your Enemy. You can buy that at merch.thesloopcast.com. Uh, I'm wearing I what might be our best-selling shirt in the 7071 store. Um, it says Ohio Beer Only, and it has the name of a bunch of breweries on there. Um, and I'm actually also wearing Sloopcast merch. I don't know. I don't know why you can see it, but uh, it's, this, it's the same design that Kyle wears as a T-shirt sometimes, where it is legally a parody of what is now the old crew logo. I, I don't think anything in Ohio can technically be called bourbon. Doesn't that have to come from Tennessee or Kentucky? But we can do whiskey, spirits, whatever. Um, all right, Kyle, that's it. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> Since he is part of Kentucky, you aren't wrong. Um, God, you threw me again. You guys have thrown me several times this episode. Um, Kyle, anything in Kyle's corner? Um, no, not really. I'm just gonna That's totally say good, fair. Luck, good luck to good luck to my alma mater. They play this Saturday in 
Ohio high school football. Kyle, not to tell you how to do your job, but I guess I'm about to do that. Everything before the butt is bullshit. Uh, Ohio State picked up two commitments today. Two. Uh, one of them is a basketball player, uh, George Washington the uh, Third. He is from the previously mentioned Kentucky, uh, and he is a top 50 national player in the country per the 24-7 sports composite. And the Ohio State Wrestling Buckeyes picked up a commitment today from uh, Jesse Mendez. So there you go. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. I just turned it into Jared's corner. But now Kyle's been on the road working since Sunday. So I'm 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 just messing with Kyle. Everything's <laughs> he's been insanely busy with that real life job. We have to have real life jobs because not enough of you have visited patreon.thesloopcast.com. Uh, <laughs> uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a Columbus based band called Two Cow Garage. That is Two Cow Garage. They'll be ending today's episode. So, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Two Cow Garage. Mm-hmm.